Welcome to the space where creators have aligned a positive and intellectual collab of open minds. For sharing and learning from one another, it's a vibe. We give us a podcast on the mic. Subscribe, educators, spitting bars. I guess you didn't know, multifaceted and humble, taking off life goals. The classroom is my comfort zone, where I plant and sow. Seeds of knowledge, compassion, empathy, and hope. Reading is the key to unlocking your potential. Countless benefits, including positive and mental. Regardless of the genre, books are highly influential. Go get yours, I'll get mine. Make you strive. Money mental. Come rock with me and get down to this new jam. Yeah. Yeah. Between my friends, I had a very simple plan. Educate the masses through books and life lessons. It's a grand slam. I'm out. Tala Falava and welcome to the Reads of Rossa podcast. I'm really excited to introduce today's guest. He is an educator, a podcast host, a blogger, and community organizer. Coming to us from Nelson and Aotearoa, welcome to the show, Dan Haitang. Yay! <laughs> How are you, bro? <laughs> yeah, I'm te fatalo fatui, no sunga rosa. Um, Fabia, we are all from a mini, um, Talan Wanga, yeah, to Fafaid Way, at Tumalangan Fab, my Lord, so for no, my Langi and Ma. Ah, Talofa Rosa, um, awesome to meet you and to be given this opportunity to jump on your podcast. Fat Tay Lava. Yeah, I'm excited, bro. You know, I think I, I saw you the first time I saw your content was uh, when Sammy was on your show, when you interviewed uh, Sammy Sell. That, that was the first time I'd come across your content. I was like, hey, well, because I'm always looking for uh, educators who are just out there impacting their communities, you know, in positive ways. And so when I saw your stuff, I was like, okay, cool. You're on my radar <laughs> way back then, way back then. So I love your work. I love what you're doing. And I'm really excited to uh, be able to highlight your platform and just also what you're doing with our Samoan community. Uh, mm. Out there in Nelson, I have so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, Malo, so for Dan, it's so good to have you here. Um, I guess just to kind of get started, uh, I wanted to talk about like a, a younger Dan uh, back in school. Like now you're a teacher, right? Now you're a teacher. Do you often see students in your classes that remind you of a younger you? Yeah, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, it's um, yeah, this is my fourth year of teaching, and um, yeah, the past uh, three years I've been teaching in um, English medium school. So um, here in Nelson, there's not really a um, there's a growing population of uh, Pacifica students, mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, it hasn't been until I've been in the Maori um, kind of class this year. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, obviously uh, these generation a lot of mixed um, ethnicities, so. Yeah, I guess this year was the first time really I saw um, a student that was very similar to myself when I was probably their age, um, probably more at college rather than intermediate. But um, yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, it was, you know, was, this is the first year we really I've seen some kids that, um, you know, I will definitely see, man, um, you know, that was, that was me back in the days. Um, but yeah, I've had other feelings or, you know, seen other children where i've been like oh yeah i really feel sorry for these kids or i really feel um you know you know what they're going through or can relate um as a as a person but also you know as a former student going through the new zealand education system um but also just going through um you know tough times um in the as a family or you know just currently situation in new zealand and across the world with the um pandemic and things like that so yeah. Mm. What kind of student were you at school? Uh, were you, you know, the shy student? Were you outspoken? Were you confident? Yeah. Um, it's hard to um, kind of, I was, yeah, I guess I was um, just a mix of all of the students. <laughs> you can, uh, you know, I was, um, I remember for a period in Australia, I was very, um, close to the teacher, so I was more like a teacher's pet. Um, and then there were other times where I was, you know, I could be real shy and didn't really want to um, say anything. Or but then there was times where I was the class clown and <laughs> and you know spending more time outside of the classroom than in it. But um, yeah, I, I was just yeah. I guess it's pretty similar to my personality. I'm you know sometimes I'm a people person. 
and then some you know times where i just like to have my own space and and be by myself so mm. yeah i guess kind of as a student i was you know there were times where i was really bubbly and um you know making everyone laugh and then there were times where i just kind of like to keep to myself and and kind of process life as i was going through you know you mentioned australia so going to school in australia as a pacific islander or as a samoan how different is that to new zealand yeah um it's funny like those i was only there for three years and year three four five um yeah i really enjoyed i don't know just the bigger schools and mm. you know um obviously you know different people like different kind of lifestyle and culture in australia i really enjoyed my time in school so there was no um yeah i never really had any issues or came across schools like different in terms of um you know new zealand or australia um mm. <clears throat> primary schools i guess and intermediate um now being a teacher and being able to kind of reflect on my experiences it was you know a good time you had you know you're with the same people all the time you had the same teachers you get to you know strengthen those relationships um it wasn't until you know i got to college um that's where i started to find it a bit more challenging you know so having different um different teachers and being with different people all the time as you change um, to different classes so yeah I, I, mm. my yeah, primary school and intermediate was pretty yeah um couldn't say there was too much difference between australia and new zealand obviously they're trying to do their best to um you know do the main three read write and do basic mathematics so yeah you know as a young samoan growing up uh who, who were some of your role models were you know like where were you looking in terms of role modeling uh mentors yeah um i guess for uh, it's probably similar to most someone um you know growing up um it's usually your parents it's your uncles your aunties um you know your older cousins and and things like that um from a young age i was never really someone to um you know i grew up played rugby for a long time and i, I never grew up um you know idolizing any all blacks or any um you know, any of them some are more players i was just you know i just had family members that um you know were, you know i held them dearly and um in high, re high re regard um i guess um you know going through college it was you know some of the older students um you know the way they carry themselves you know there was something that you um, aspired to be um as you progress through the college years to be a leader and and for people to to look up and say oh yeah you know that's the sort, sort of person i want to be um or a student i want to be at, at college and and you know those skills transfer into into life when you you leave school so mm. yeah i've never really had um yeah you know, I, I know a lot of students these days they you know they have a lot of these idols or um, people that they look up to um but yeah for me it was yeah just family members and you know people in church that you you know they were real cool you, know, you thought they were really cool or um you know they had um traits that you admired um so yeah that was kind of some my mental thing. Mm. and then when did you know that you wanted to be a teacher what was the point where you were like this is the path i'm going to take yeah it's uh uh yeah i always joke uh, um you know my blog and my podcast and just in conversations when people talk to me about teaching and things um obviously i'm from potty door in wellington and you know there's um you know that's pretty similar to south auckland a lot of um, pacific cultures and pacific people and um in that area so being in nelson um yeah it was just so different different culture to me and um i just noticed how positive everyone was down here and happy and um driven um and that kind of yeah kind of led me down to similar you know wanting to be driven and and find ways um outside of rugby to be able to to you know keep you know doing well in life and yeah it education kind of um yeah like i my mindset around education when i left school was not very positive i didn't really 
you know, like school or in terms of education. Um, I like going to play with my friends and hang out with my friends, but not in terms of learning and things like that. Um, but yeah, I guess once I had my son, um, it was that was something that really prompted me to um, to really trying to look at a career in education. I was a teacher aide um, to start with, and um, yeah, as as I was saying before, like joking with some of the people that I, you know, I never imagined or people never imagined me to be a teacher. I was, you know, as I said, I'd be a class clown, or you know, I'd never go to class, or um, you know, I was just the classic Kiwi kid, or you know young poly kid that wanted to be a rugby superstar uh, one day and um yeah to to be a teacher was yeah just never i like, moved down to nelson to be a carpenter and follow the tradey life but i quickly learned that um i didn't really like being told what to do <laughs> <laughs> you like to tell people what to do huh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hey, that that's the teacher in all of us. You know, we always got that little bit in us, so it's okay, no shame. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yes. Um, like today, I was we went on a class trip, and one of the ladies, the mum, said, "Oh, I wish I just told one of the kids to you know, it was like pick up their rubbish or pick up their bag." And and the, the parent was like, "Oh, I wish my children would listen to me like like that." <laughs> Yeah, same. Yeah, same. <laughs> um, yeah, so like the teacher thing is, yeah, it's, I'm still um, like I, I'm just constantly trying to learn how to be a better teacher. Um, that's my, I don't think uh, I've, I've known that I, I, I wasn't going to be a teacher for very long um, in terms of classroom teacher, mm. but I, I like the, the just educating people. I don't necessarily like the, the, you know the name to, I'm a teacher or mm. just someone that likes to help people really that's my and that's what I love being with the you know the day-to-day nine to three is yeah you're in front of those kids um, you know getting to know them you know learning their strengths um, trying to encourage them to to keep focusing on their strengths and always be so negative on some of the things they can't do but yeah so that's kind of my teacher my teacher yeah. journey that's cool. I mean, you know, teaching like every day is different. Uh, you know, life lot you never stop learning. I think the moment someone says they've stopped learning, then it's like maybe you shouldn't be in teaching. Like we're forever trying to evolve and be better. So, you know, what you said resonates for sure. You know, I wanted to just uh backtrack a little. Uh you mentioned, you know, being from Porirua and then moving down to Nelson, uh the mindset and it was a bit more positive. Uh, why do you think that is like you know, like why do you think it's different in Nelson in terms of like mindset and attitude and things like that? Um yeah, I guess for me just I, I was just thinking about it now. Hmm. Um, and like, I guess growing up in Porirua, like I've, I've been, you know, lived in Wellington for a few years, lived in other parts of Wellington, but Porirua is, I feel like that's where a large chunk of my life, um, you know, kind of shaped and formed some of the, the world views that I have currently. Um, but yeah, I guess in Porirua it was, you know, there's a lot of poverty. Um, so the mindset is you're always trying to work and provide and that's just the kind of cycle that you you go through and you see that a lot of um then you know african-american movies where you know they've gone through poverty and some you know sometimes every now and then someone gets you know makes it or works so hard and gets gets you know um gets ahead in life i guess um, moving to nelson you know there was not so much poverty um, um there was you know people you know were doing jobs that they enjoyed doing and um you know they were just enjoying life there was so many things to do other than you know just mm. the usual back home it was just you know your parents would say them go to work and you'd go to school come back at church on the weekends or family events and things like that so yeah i guess that's for me that's the kind of just thinking about it now that's probably the two um two kind of uh frames of or viewing life you know what it was you're surrounded by poverty so you kind of you know you kind of think that's just that's your life whereas moving away from that um here in nelson you know you've seen people 
you know, as I said, doing jobs that they want to do. I guess some of thinking back to some of our parents, they just did the job that paid the bills, and I'm sure there'd be many people um, from the Pacific Islands who um, could have pursued other um, careers and things. But part of that, you know, migration was being able to lay the foundation for us future generations to be able to get, go and get university degrees and and follow our passions and um, so yeah for me that's the kind of two kind of lenses I can think of mm. and the differences, yeah. can you share your journey of uh, continuing to learn the Samoan language and to learn about our culture mm. yeah no that's a uh, um, yeah, I guess being, uh, I grew up in the, the mindset of, um, you know, I'm Afkasi. Um, you know, my dad's um, Samoan and my mum's Balangi, um, Scottish, Irish, and probably other um, ethnicities. But um, yeah, I, I grew up around Samoans, um, grew up in the, in the New Zealand version of the um, Samoan kind of lifestyle. Um, that you know, I wish I got to experience um, growing up. But um, yeah, I guess it's been uh, you know I've been learning my Samoan culture and language you know ever since I've been born. I, I've been immersed in it, um, but never really took notice. Um, I've growing up whenever there were Samoan events or, you know, usually church events or whalawe lave, such as weddings and funerals and different things like that. I was always the kid that was just playing outside, so I never really took notice, just knew that, man, these guys take ages of whatever they're doing <laughs> um, <laughs> on outside. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I guess once again, you know, um, as we get older and mature, some of the – and started for me it was just having kids just knowing that i started thinking about you know what are the things that i want my kids to to be able to learn and experience um and pass on whatever i've you know been able to um learn over the years um so yeah i guess that for me that's where i really started noticing man i i, I can speak conversational someone um but there were there were other aspects of the someone culture and language that i was really really keen to know more about and you know as you are as a teacher you're always learning and trying to upskill and things like that so yeah I started um <clears throat> I got involved with the um you know as, oh, through my own just kind of learning I, I followed a um a teacher in Auckland um Nafunua um mm. who's uh, actually from Wellington as well um so she she was running like some classes online that <clears throat> Um, were kind of structured Samoan classes, which I was like, yeah, I was really keen to jump on that. And yeah, that just just getting exposed to, um, I know you can't really, it's different in Samoa. Like I, I recently learned that, you know, in Samoa, there is no, you know, you, the Samoan, the Anganufa Samoa and all of the Samoan aspects that we, we discuss here in New Zealand and outside of Samoa. It's just normal. It's just the normal term or there's no it's not like something that you notice it's just the way of living right. whereas in New Zealand you really do notice the you know when there's a fat more thing that you know okay this is the different processes and different aspects that um that are added in um so yeah i really started to i enjoyed that course it gave me some structures especially around just um greeting um people or um in learning some of the, for me, it was I always was interested in the proverbs, um, um, so that was something for me to really that really hooked me in. I really liked, um, you know, writing blogs and things. I really liked the uh, the different metaphors and proverbs that our our Samoan culture has, um, and yeah. So from there, I just kept, you know, ha hassling one of my friends that I met through rugby here in um, Nelson and um, yeah, he's been, you know, teaching me the different um, aspects of the, the Samoan culture that um, had, a, had I had grown up in Samoa, would have, you know, would have just learned as part of our family, um, you know, upbringing. Um, so yeah, I've been involved now with, um, I, did, I just finished another online course, uh, which was a free one based in Auckland. 
um, again, that's just added some more, um, you know, just different aspects of um, the Samoan, especially speaking um, mm. on the Samoans and things. So they, um, I know there's the conversational Samoan, but also the when you're talking to your elders and um, ministers and things like that, having that respectful um, for Samoa as well. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I've just been trying to learn more about it and, and try and pass that on to my kids as well. So, and, um, so they they know their where they come from and um and how important you know it is to to know your culture and language mm. Mm. yeah i think uh living away from home like living here in japan um like every chance i get to speak someone i will speak someone like when i call home i'll speak someone um and then a few weeks or uh, maybe like a month ago i met up with some of the Samoan community and also met some uh, scholarship students from Samoa who are all here doing their master's uh, programs here in Japan and it was cool because it was just a whole day of speaking Samoan it was like it was just so nice and usually I'm a bit um I get nervous you know when conversing with like you know with people you know with Samoans from Samoa you know it's yeah. always like a bit nerve-wracking because you're like oh can I keep up but it was great it was so good it was just like yeah, yeah. Uh, I felt like I was at home it was so nice it was really good so yeah I think also like living away from home is like just every chance to kind of like connect to the culture or language um yeah that's super important so yeah just Absolutely. random thoughts <laughs> yeah totally connect um, so do you also, you've got your mum's uh, side of the family. Are you, uh, do you know much about your mum's, you know, that part of your heritage? Are you also learning that to try and find a balance between mm. your two cultures? Yeah, I guess, um, it's, yeah, it's like um, kind of more of my background. I grew up in, so, yeah, my, my father, Samoan, passed away when, um, before I turned one. Um, so I didn't have that, you know, that kind of first point of contact in my family um, they would normally learn from. Um, but I was lucky to be, grow, you know, to grow up with some of my dad's family um, while I was in Australia for a bit. And I've always kept close um, contact with them over the years. Um, and whereas my mum's um, my side, you know, she was adopted herself. Um, when she was young so um i had a little bit of interaction with some of my mum's adopted family um growing up but then uh, i haven't really had much contact with them plus my my mum's you know biological mother i know my mum has done a bit of research herself around her uh, biological father who is scottish and um yeah, just every time she's trying to find more information and things, this kind of gets to a dead end. So for my Balangi side or Pakeha side, I would, to be honest, don't really know too much about it. But as as I um, kind of research more about my dad's like family, villages, and and where we come from in Samoa, mm. really does, there's always in the back of my mind, I'm always interested to learn more about uh, some of my you know ancestry from my um my mum's side so yeah i guess as as the time passes on and i'm still i guess growing up around some ones that's kind of been my main focus but yeah i definitely want to um at some stage be able to to know for my my children as well and for their children and to be able to know where they come from so yeah mm. and have you been to samoa have you taken your family to samoa uh, what are your villages in Samoa? Or were your dad's villages? Yeah, so um, I'll go with the villages first. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it's been uh, like I grew up, you know, thinking that I was from Mo Moka'a, mm -hmm. um, which I am. But that was kind of the village that I got told that was our village, um, which was on my birth certificate. So, um, yeah, so that's one of my villages, Moka'a. Um, Falefa, um, Tautu, 
Jutze in a beer. Um, uh, lots of funga, safaka, mm-hmm. and uh, vayala. I think that's, yeah, those are my, so my dad's, um, those are villages from my dad's mum's side. And then my dad's dad's side um, is local bar. But don't know, yeah, I don't know too much about my dad's dad's side. But I know I'm more close to my dad's mum's side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, and those are... um, I've been to Samoa twice. Um, I, I was uh, Samoan family took me in from the age eleven to about nineteen, uh, and we went to both villages of um, <clears throat> this this family that took me in, which was in Samakau. Um, and I can't quite remember the, the mum's side, um, but yeah, we we. Were, went all around Samoa, Bolu, and then we went across to some of our other family in Savai. So, yeah, I was very fortunate that first time I went. I think I was there for like a month. This year, my second to last year of college. And I was, yeah, like just the whole time I was there, I just felt like I just felt like that's where I needed to be. Like I just felt some like full Samoan. Um, yeah, I just felt really connected to, to Samoa. So, I was yeah fortunate enough to go again in 2017, I think. Um, one of my um, close friends was playing for the Manu Samoa, and he um, asked me to go over and try out for the Samoa A, uh, which is the team underneath the Manu Samoa. And yeah, we spent I think I spent about a month or two weeks in Samoa, and then two weeks in Fiji. So I made the team, and then went over to Fiji and played in the tournament. So yeah just there again i was obviously a bit older um the last time i went and yeah again i just felt really connected to the place i i was fortunate to go and stay in um very close to my village in Napier with one of my my dad's um uncles um who's one of the last ones there in samoa most of my my dad's side migrated to new zealand and then to australia um, so yeah, I was really fortunate to to go back. But again, you know, as I said, those I think it was about four or five villages that um, um, on my dad's side. I've yeah, I'm really keen to take my kids back and um, also try and find and connect to some of those those villages and, and families in Samoa that I've never met before. Um, so yeah, I guess yeah, next year, probably possibly the year after. Um, looking to try and get take the kids and, and wife over um, and spend a bit of time with our, our family over overseas. Um, but, yeah. That's cool. Um, you know, in terms of your life as an educator, um, you know, what, what are some of the strategies that you like to use to foster relationships and build rapport uh, in the learning spaces? Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is one of the um for me it was just you know when i was doing my studies just for me really felt like common sense like mm-hmm. i know we spend a lot of time you know it talks about relationships you know mm-hmm. the key to um before you can even teach anything you need to first build that relationship with that child or with that student that you're um, trying to teach the content to so yeah i guess for me that's um just something yeah just really important for me was just being able to connect um with that person whoever it is whether it's the child or you know sometimes you're teaching other sometimes teaching adults so for me it's always just being able to connect and and find out um how that learner um likes to learn you know sometimes just having a simple conversation around um how they prefer to learn just saves you a lot of um, thinking because they'll just tell you, you know, most people will know what what works for them. Sometimes, um, you know, students like to listen to music um, mm. and do their work. For them, for most, I find that doesn't. Even from, for myself, when I was, you know, I'm trying to do things, um, like really focus, um, you know, I find music quite distracting. Whereas sometimes if I'm just doing things where I'm not, overly thinking too much it's just like you know something i can just do while i'm i I do prefer to listen to music because it just kind of makes it more 
the task a lot more fun. Um, so yeah, I guess yeah, for me it's really important just to be able to connect with them first, and that and that's as a student um, head on. I, yeah, that's how I felt. I always if if the I knew straight away if the teacher wanted to help help me learn, they always they always built their relationship um, first before trying to, to trying to teach the content. So yeah. Mm, you know, um, if I was a fly on the wall, like if I was watching or listening to your class, to, uh, to your students or whoever the learners are that are in front of you, what would I be hearing? Uh, what would I be seeing on a normal day? On a, I don't know if we can call a normal teaching normal, but just on any given day, like what, what do you think I would be hearing or seeing from your learners? Yeah. Um... No, it's a it's a funny kind of way to put it. I guess the to be a fly on the wall, um, you know. You guess for me, it's just you know just having you know kids enjoying themselves, talking. Um, you know, I've, I don't know a lot. I like to talk a lot when I'm when I'm teaching, mm -hmm. and I know for some kids, you know, when you're just talking the whole time. And we all know if you're like in a lecture or if you're sitting there listening to something or someone speak for a long period can become quite, um, you know, for some people they don't like, they don't mind that. You know, people listen to podcasts and different conversations for a long time. But for some, yeah, I just, you know, trying not to, for, for me anyway, I like to just talk about things and help them understand the different um, connections that they're making. But yeah, I guess... For me, I, I I like listening to knowing that there's conversations between the ch the children and the students. I think that's something that you probably you'll definitely hear in the class um, every now and then. If it just depends how it is, I'm sure you'd hear some music. Um, you would hear laughter. <coughs> um, yeah, all the gossip that the kids talk to each other <laughs> in between, trying to do what they're supposed to be doing. Um, but yeah, oh, for me, I just. I try and foster a classroom where um, you know kids are, I guess, in the first instance, in a safe place. You know, knowing that um, when they come to school, that they have someone, an adult, that, that they can relate to. Um, they can, you know, come to me with any any concerns or, um, or you know, things that are you know going well for them. You know, if they feel like you know if they're really proud of an achievement or um yeah just to you know, put more of a positive spin on it yeah i guess that's um yeah mm. are you able to network and connect with other pacifica teachers like across new zealand or i mean are there opportunities for you to do that or is it not not so much is it more like southern south island teacher network or yeah so um it's been quite hard with COVID. like we mm. Uh, my first experience meeting other Pacifica teachers was at a union, um, Pacifica Funnel down in Christchurch. <clears throat> and, um, yeah, it was just just awesome to be around, you know, like-minded teachers, um, you know, relating, you know, obviously for me and Nelson, there's not um, a lot of Pacifica teachers, so it can be quite isolating, um, you know, wanting to do a lot of stuff in the Pacifica space, but not always having the connections we have a lot in um, early childhood um but yeah i was involved in the pacifica trust here in nelson um and that was one of the things that we looked at trying to do was to connect some of our pacifica teachers just to to build that connection um and and just see what um you know what expertise um, they have or what we have that we could share with each other um, but yeah, I find yeah it is quite challenging here in Nelson and the South Island, I guess in general, um, because we yeah there's not many you know there's just pockets of us uh, in mm -hmm. the South Island. Yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah, mm -hmm. I guess that's, that's a bit of a work on <coughs> and mm -hmm. needs um, more strengthening. Mm. Uh, you're uh, also a podcast host, Talila Sua, 
podcast. Mm. Uh, can you share your journey with us thus far? How difficult has it been to get it up and running? Or how easy has it been? How's it going? <laughs> yeah, um, thank you for, um, yeah, I guess for me, the uh, to start off with, it was easy. Um, like the, the process, I was just like, man, this is such a, you know, I was listening to podcasts. Um, it was quite exciting as well at the same time. I was like, man, I, me doing a podcast. Um, but yeah, I guess there's that always of my two, you know, my personality. Sometimes I'm quite to be able to just go and put myself out there and talk in front of people um, can be quite daunting. But also there's that um, side of me where I just, you know, want to talk to people and relate to people and, and connect and discuss um, different topics. Um, that was there was yeah that was the parts where that I really enjoyed so um, yeah it was yeah I guess for me with the first of all it was easy to start with and then um, as an educator and as a father and and all these different things that you know sports play sports and part of the community and things like that starts to eat up at all this mm. time we have so. Um, for me, the podcast um, has, you know, was tracking really well. I, I didn't have a, at the time, you know, it was during COVID and you know, obviously you had a bit more time on your hands to do different things. So it was a bit of a focus. And then as I've started, you know, as we've kind of transitioned back into our new normal, um, yeah, I've tried to, I've you know, it's been in the back of the, my, my mind to try and ha um, have some more, um, episodes of the the podcast but yeah I guess just life life happens and and, um, and I've always been um, didn't want it to be like a chore I wanted it to mm. I wanted it, um, to be something that I enjoy doing and, and 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 yeah so for me the the podcast I guess for me I feel like it's going well um, I've always wanted to just interview kind of start with close friends and, and family and and then start to branch out to to different people that I've met on my journey, and and some of the people that I I would like to interview one day as well. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah. I guess for me, it's um, I would like to have more episodes coming out, um, but I guess yeah, I'm going to have this time over the summer just to think about what I might do with with some of the podcasts, um, people that I want to get on the, and, and interview as well. So. Yeah, I think what you do is great, and I hope that whenever the time comes and you pick up your, uh, you pick it up again and continue with the episodes. I just think, awesome, seriously, mm -hmm. bro, awesome. And for those listening, um, you can check the bio for all the information where you can connect with Dan. Uh, you can connect with his blog site, which also has the videos of his six podcast episodes that he's done so far. So good, really good content, fam. Please check it out. I support a brother, support a fellow educator. You know, we are just like hardcore folks, man, super busy, but always finding time to be impactful, be intentional and change lives. So please support him. Uh, so check the bio for that. I wanted to ask about, um, a, you keep mentioning, you know, people that you'd like to bring on, dream guest, or someone that you look up, okay, well, don't, don't say someone you look up to, but a dream guest that you would love to have on your show, uh, you know, in the long run. Hmm. Yeah, I guess, um, yeah, I, you know, I've been thinking about, um, you know, the, the early stages of the podcast just being just, you know, any um, youth or any young person or even doesn't matter what age you are because sometimes you can be a bit older and start to want to know more about yourself and your mm. specific culture and things like that. So for me, it was always about having people um, on the on the podcast that people can easily relate to or can go, oh, yeah, I, man, that's I'd really relate to that and start to spark something for them. Um, that was, you know, for me, listening to different podcasts, I would always spark different ideas and, and things like that. So I've always been um, really focused on just getting people on that just want to, you know, have a conversation about a topic or and share their, their life experiences. So um, to have a, a dream guest, um, 
Oh, obviously, um, it would be awesome to interview The Rock. <laughs> oh, I love it, man. That's what we're talking about, fam. Just aim <laughs> high for real. Uh, you know, he's you know, growing up watching wrestling and seeing how successful um, he's been able to, um, you know, reach, you know, at the height of his success right now. And I'm sure as he continues that, um, yeah, it would be awesome to, to in terms of, Somewhat, someone that's done you know amazing things and puts our more on the map um but yeah i guess um yeah just oh man for me just being able to listen to um some of our our elders that are, are well versed in the Samoan culture um and be able to just like them speak in Samoan, but have some some kind of translator that translates all the all this um, these gold nuggets that mm. um, you know you know the life's been around for a long time, and you know some simple truths that kind of keep passing that you don't need to reinvent the wheel. There's just so many um, um, good good advice and and um, kind of wisdom that can help us. Um, be better people and, and and move forward in life. So, yeah, any, um, yeah, any of our Samoan leaders, I'd love to to, to interview one day. Mm. That's awesome. Again, I look forward to seeing how your podcast evolves. And to everyone listening or watching who says that Dwayne Johnson is their uncle, please let them know, reflective underscore Dan, follow him, Tali Lesua podcast. That's what's up. We need to get him on the show. Okay. Um, <laughs> putting it on blast, fam, putting it on blast. So I want to um, I, I want to ask about uh, the work that you do for your community. But since we're talking about the podcast, I thought let's just go into Reflective Dan, your blog. Mm. Can you tell us about your five principles of move, connect, grow, serve, and reflect? um yeah thank you i've yeah for me it's um yeah this whole journey of the podcast and the blog started during covid mm -hmm. um you know i know a lot of teachers were trying to think of ways to to you to put a positive spin on on covid and uh, for me was um getting children to reflect on you know and writing down you know how they were feeling and what you're doing during this time um you know as it was you know something that happens every hundred years or um so imagine you know 50 years time someone picking up your your journal or your your diary and reading you know man 50 years ago we were in a pandemic and COVID, mm. and um yeah the, that was kind of my my thinking around yeah oh why not um you know start a, a blog um, and for me, it was around my kids writing, writing stories and writing, um, writing about my life experiences, so that they could, you know, if I was ever to pass away, that they had some videos or they had some, some, you know, some of my writing that they could read and, and, and my reflections to read and 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 understand who I was and what what I um, experienced and grew up. Um, with so yeah it kind of just evolved from there the, the writing took a bit of time my my wife does a lot of the editing and, and mm. reading and and things so um yeah it was i really enjoyed the writing and and things like that and from there i was i thought like having a conversation and just being able to put a podcast together was you know when obviously at that time when people had a lot of time to be able to listen to things and watch um being able to develop a podcast and so yeah that's kind of where it evolved and and from there i started to as i thought about the podcast and why why i was doing it, it was really around um you know putting stories out there that people can relate to and, and be able to connect to and start to to get them thinking about you know um what they could do to improve prove themselves or if you know what if they needed answers to questions that you know sometimes you just need to be able to listen to someone say exactly oh man they went through the same thing that i went through and flick a switch that helps them um get the help they need or um help move them in the right direction and and from there yeah i just kept just kept evolving and and i started looking at myself and thinking man like 
if I'm going to be someone that wants to um, encourage and 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 help people reach their goals and their aspirations, then I need to look at myself and think about you know what what are some principles that that I stand for and and what helps me um, thrive and and um, yeah, I guess for me that was where these these kind of principles developed and um, yeah, just yeah, I guess these I, in my teaching and my personal life. Um, that's what really helped kind of bring the, these principles together. Um, a common one in New Zealand education is the Whare Te uh, which is the Māori health model um, around, you know, your mental well-being, your physical, your social um, and spiritual uh, well-being. And there were, those were things that during my teaching, you know, learning to be a teacher and in my teaching edu- career, um, with principles or lenses that I, I thought were really important to foster in, in students. So those are kind of the, from there I started looking at Pacific models and, and they were very similar. Um, and then from there I just thought, you know, what are the things that make me feel, what are things that I do that kind of make me improve or or keep going in, in the right direction? And that's where these um, kind of principles came together, the serve was you know as i learned more about my culture that the word tautua kept kept coming up and um i know that serve is not the direct translation of tautua but is a is a form of tautua so for me to to be able to uh, develop my leadership skills i definitely learned that it's, you know you need to be able to serve to lead um connecting was a really important one being able to connect with other people and share the stories and, and things like that. And that was, uh, again, something that stands out for me. Um, as I said before, you know, there's times where I really want to be social and like to hang out with people. And then again, there's times where um, sometimes I just need to connect, you know, for me, it's just praying or, you know, having that, you know, that quiet time. Moving, you know, I've grown up playing sports and, yeah, you know, I always have enjoyed you know, that physical aspect of rugby or running or lifting weights and things like that. So it was important for me to try and um, keep that principle, you know, at the forefront. And I've noticed that I've slipped off, you know, the move kind of um, principle. But, um, you know, it's something that when I'm when I'm moving or when I've got that right, then all the other principles start to kind of um, fall into place. Um, the grow is, you know, for me, that that mindset of you know the lifelong learner always growing and and um, different aspects of your life whether it's you know learning new things or learning new skills or or growing them in my faith or you know growing as a as a father as a friend as a as a son just um you know sums up ways of being able to keep improve and for me the the reflecting um kind of ties it all together where you're <coughs> um as a learner you know, there you can learn whatever you want to learn, but if you don't reflect on it, then it's you know it just kind of goes in, and then that's it. You don't really do anything with it. Whereas when you learn something and reflect on it, it gives you the opportunity to to kind of take out the key parts of um, of you know what you why you learnt it or and, and things like that. So yeah, those are um, you know there's some of them that you know. I'm looking at the board right now where it's got got them up. Mm. Um, so, yeah, um, you know, I, I notice when one of them is not, you know, within, it's not really balanced, but, you know, when one of them's, I haven't focused on it for too long, then I start to notice there's something that is lacking and I need to start connecting with people. If I know I haven't been um, going for a run or going for a gym for the last three months, then um, <laughs> I need to get back onto, you know, doing that because that's an important um, part of you know me moving forward and growing and, and things like that so yeah that's kind of just a little um, background around those those principles thank you for sharing that um i want to talk about ftsnt uh what is your are you in uh, what's your role in uh in this uh community Mm. organization are you is it governance role or are you part of are you just part of the community there 
Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so this has um, been a little bit of a passion project. Um, so, yeah, I started out as a um, like a committee member, so like a volunteer in our working committee. And from there, I just, yeah, obviously I had prior experience as a board member on the Pacifica Trust. Um, and then once I'm, you know, found that there was a Samoan community and they were running as a, as a council, yeah, I really wanted to, um, as I was on that journey of learning about my culture and trying to encourage my son to be, you know, to, well, my sons to learn more about their culture. It really, um, kind of drove me to, to connect with the Samoan community and, um, yeah, it's been, a just, it's just grown from, from last year where I was a committee member to just helping out wherever I could. And then this year, um, at our AGM being voted on as a, as a board member, as a trustee. Um, oh, actually, no, I've voted on as a vice treasurer. Um, so it's, yeah, it's been a, um, yeah, really cool experience, um, developing my, um, my governance kind of expertise but with a Samoan lens um you know these these trustees and members of the board have been involved in the community for a long time so um yes yeah, it's been awesome to to learn and support them in terms of navigating the kind of um becoming becoming a trust and also being able to uh, provide and deliver services to the community so um it's a bit of a so the current situation is a bit of both like governance um but because we're not really we don't employ anyone it's mm -hmm. kind of the operations as well so um whether it's um supporting them with applying for funds or um delivering the programs being a um, facilitator or um being in the you know background peeling the potatoes or <clears throat> whatever it is um as we're you know it's our this is our first year we were registered as a community organization um, at the end of 2021 so the year we're all we've almost reached um, one year of being a charitable trust um and yeah it's just been massive growth um, we've run our first um community initiative um, outside of our usual independence day celebrations um and yeah um it's has it's been you know, from my perspective has been really successful but also there's obviously after doing something like this, there's so many things that you learn from and and can improve for next time. So yeah, it's really brought our community together and um, yeah, we're looking forward to, to you know, providing some more um, community services um, in the future and, and uh, yeah. And is it a, is it a space where, um, so, you know, when meeting like AGM meetings and things like that, like, is it, like, do they use Ngana Samoa or is it, is it bilingual? Like, is it an opportunity for people to come and just be able to just be comfortable because you're, you're able to use the language that is, do you know, like hmm. uh, native to you? Do you know what I mean? Or is it just really, it's a bilingual kind of situation? Yeah. Yeah. So um, we, yeah. So like, when we have our community meetings um and when we have our you know when we hold events um it is predominantly in Samoan. okay um so yeah so that i guess for me like that's been a big learning curve for me is like learning um you know i've, I've spent more time watching you know the Samoan kind of parliament and and listening to the different kind of words that they use to explain their thinking so um, yeah, it's been a, yeah, I've really enjoyed, um, the aspect. It's, it's really, it can be quite a bit of pressure, um, because, you know, you're, you're doing a lot of things on behalf of the community. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, I've really enjoyed it. It's really strengthened my, my language. Um, and yeah, no, mm. it's anyone, you know, if there is, um, people that come that are, oh, we have people have they have come that are like full Samoan but don't speak Samoan. Um, they try to explain, um, mm -hmm. 
you know, things so that if you come and you don't speak Samoan, you can understand kind of what's happening. So, yeah. That's that's really cool. Yeah, I wanted to ask because I was wondering, like, you know, there's a way to run like gen, like Balangi, you know, and that kind of setting, those meetings, but then it's so different when Fasamoa is involved in yeah. terms of speaking, you know, like things like not speaking out of turn and that there's processes, right? So I think yeah. that's totally cool. What an awesome mm-hmm. opportunity for a community uh, to get in there and um, have their say. Uh, do you have any book recommendations or a book recommendation or maybe a book that you enjoy sharing with your sons? Wait, are you a reader? <laughs> like, I'm like, hey, you're a teacher. Come on now. I know you're a reader. Come yeah, on. Yeah. I, I am a, I'm a reader. I love, yeah, I love all sorts of books. Um, yeah, I was thinking about this. I was like, man, what? And I was just thinking before, before I was thinking, okay, I know, you know, it's always put a plug in there for, and you got to read the Bible. That's, that's okay, the one okay. book I, I recommend. Okay. Um, those that, um, are not so that way inclined. Um, yeah, I've read. Um, I, I'm all about promoting our Pacifica and um, authors. So I'm just trying to look through some of the books that I have. Um, there is one book that I have read. Um, I think it's called Someone Whispers or Whisper. Oh. Oh, is the yeah. old, um, uh, or... yeah, I know the book that you're talking about. So, some of this here, the old, yeah. Um, uh, what is, yeah, is it vanity? Okay, why should I, I should know this? It's just so bad that I don't know this, but you're right, yes, it's... yeah. So, that was, um, in terms of like a book, and it was so weird that I found it. And uh, at the library, whispers and vanities, Samoan yes. indigenous knowledge and religion. Olinga, oi, olinga. Yep, yeah. okay, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so that was like uh, as a Samoan, um, but I guess even if you're like Pacific or even mm. not Pacific, um, that book was, was quite cool to read. Um, as I was saying before, like I'd love to interview, um, you know, some of our wise Samoan leaders that. Just speaking in Samoan, but then mm-hmm. translating it so you can understand some of the wisdom that sits behind um, the, the knowledge that they have. Um, and I thought that, that book really um, captured, um, I think it was this two, or those, I think there's one where some other scholars um, kind of pull it apart and share their thoughts. But I think that's the one where he's kind of sharing his thoughts around the Samoan culture. But yeah, that one that one really stands out to me as a um, if you're a bit older and you like to read, learn about your culture and things like that. Um, in terms of there's an author here, this book here um, was the kind of the first book that I old oh, David Riley um, mm. married to someone. Shout out um, to David Riley, amazing yeah. author, done so much for the community up there in South Auckland. Yeah. He's um that you know I've seen a lot of his books and you know those are the books that we were buying for our Pacifica students. Mm. Um and my I don't, I don't know if it's here, but my um teacher, my Samoan teacher, Nafanoa. Oh uh, yeah. He uh, did a comic book together. Um, so good, eh? Yeah. So I have it, but I don't know where it is. But it's those two yeah, I love reading these two and sharing these books with my my boys so that mm. they can, um, um, yeah, I you know I can instead of me talking about it, I can read a book and it, they can connect to, um, you know, our people. Um, mm. And in the future, um, I I'm you know this is the, the evolution of um, of all of these things, you know, the writing, the the blog, and the podcast is I actually am writing. Um, a series, a uh, bilingual um, series for about my children okay. as, they, as they experience life. So, um, Okay, you need to come back on the show when your books are, I don't care when it is, when they uh, release. My, my account is a bookstagram account. We're going to put you on blast. I always yeah. got to put the Pacifica authors on blast. Whenever that is, whether it's next year, the year after, please come yeah. back and share. Sorry, carry on. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. Uh, that's, um, yeah, like... 
that was something that uh, really, you know, when I was stepping out of my comfort zone to, to write a, a blog and even further with talking live in front of people, um, you know, I really thought that, you know, there was, there's some really, and since my idea, there's been so many others doing the same thing. Um, can't quite remember the name of the also I think he's from Auckland as well. He started writing um Chiefs some oh, series. Yeah. yeah, Chiefs series, Tony. Yeah, Tony. Tony yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah Shout really out Tony. Enjoyed. Yeah, Tony. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's the cool thing that I've really enjoyed about, you know, stepping out of my comfort zone, doing the blog, the podcast, um, is meeting, you know, some really cool, cool people like yourself um you know yeah. uh doing some really good things and 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 yeah it's just awesome to be a part of that um you know there's there's so many cool things out there that our Pacific people are doing and yeah uh, the book for me is i guess a part of the 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 podcast and the um the blog is you know a little um gift or you know some being able to share uh, uh, stories that that people from the pacific can relate to so yeah that's uh, a future book recommendation very that's a you know honestly i love it eh? i love hearing uh guests say you know what I'm, I'm thinking about or i'm in the process of writing you know telling my own story it's so important especially as pacifica folks you know we need to be telling our own stories and I'm, man, seriously, it's exciting and I cannot wait whenever that is released or comes out. You know, I just, I'm excited. I'm going to put you on blast as we do. There there are so many of our people who are out there starting to write their own stories and we just need to encourage and uplift that. Yeah. Because if we're not writing our stories, then who is, you know, who are the people writing it? So yeah. I think it's great. I think it's, man exciting bro seriously exciting okay you are very busy you've you know you kind of alluded to this without really coming out and saying i'm busy throughout the podcast but how do you take care of yourself self-care is a question i ask all the guests because they struggle with it how do you deal with it yeah um this year has been a like a really like a personal level quite tough like there's been you know i'm really conscious of making sure that i don't overwork myself or do mm. things too much but this year has felt like yeah just like for some reason just everything has just been able to get muddled and and just feel like uh, you know i can't separate time or family or separate time to go and do my passion projects and time to go and do um you know school stuff and things like that it's been a yeah it's just been a re really tough year um so that yeah this year has been quite hard in terms of, you know, looking after myself. Um, usually, um, you know, I find when I'm doing things for other people, like that's where I know, like, yep, yeah, I'm doing the right thing. You know, I'm serving and doing the right thing. But, yeah, I guess this year has been, you know, doing that. I feel like it's been quite um, hard work. Sometimes you're just giving too much and not having time for yourself. So um, for me... I really just look forward to the holidays, really. It's mm. just not, not having that, um, you know, being able to do, keep doing the things that I like doing, especially spending time with my family and um, and and things like that. So, yeah, I guess that's for me is just, you know, hanging on for those holidays and weekends and actually, you know, setting time aside to, to be able to, you know, all of these things that I'm doing is for my family, but actually – Sometimes you just need to spend time with your family and not actually do all these other, mm. these other. So um, yeah, no, that's for me is you know spending quality time with the boys, um, spending time you know with my wife and um, yeah, that's for me. That's that's where I and obviously my move one is quite a big one. Being able to go for runs or just exercise is quite a important one. Where just let out all those <laughs> frustrations and, and things like that. So mm. yeah. Yeah, school holidays are important. Any teacher that tells you they're not counting down the calendar to the next school holidays, they're lying. I'm just saying, we're all out here counting down, crossing uh, off each day. I'm just saying, just yeah. saying. Um, okay, and then uh, before we wrap up, future aspirations, our future goals and dreams. I mean, you've shared about the book, you know, our long-term plan. Our mm. career goals, you know, is there something that you're kind of looking towards or working towards? 
Yeah, um, for me, uh, when I started the teacher degree, I was always had the mindset of um, doing my masters. Mm. So yeah, I was um, yeah. I guess for me, doing the masters was something that I, I wanted to do, and I'm still trying to do that. I did one paper this year, um, which was around Pacific education, and you know I really enjoyed um, that paper. It kind of helped form um, the pathway I want to go down in terms of my masters. Um, but I know that's that's just like the foundation for um, for me. A short answer: I'd love to be a um, to be able to go back to Samoa and and support you know changing the education system so that's um, authentic to Samoa and not like a copy of another mm. country's um, education system. So yeah, I'd love to be a um, you know in the future for me like a facilitator going around schools and helping. You know that key ingredient that helps um, you know the different learners, which is upskilled teachers um, and things like that. So yeah, I'm I'm pretty flexible in terms of the education space. I'm I don't really have um, you know you know God willing you know whatever God has planned for me. I'm uh, yeah, that's that's kind of the direction I'll go in. But yeah, just just helping our Pacific community and more specifically our Samoan community. Mm. reach their goals and um especially being outside of some or being able to you know still be a um yeah be connected to your culture and 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 see your culture uh, as well so yeah oh that's cool um so you know as we uh, i'm about to wrap up the show i i just want to say some final words and then I'll, I'll hand it over to you uh dan just to kind of wrap us up uh with your final words i really just wanted to say uh, i really appreciate you coming through today um i know it's late there in new zealand <laughs> it is late there in new zealand um and i appreciate it i know you're very busy you've got your family you've got your you know, teacher life and, and community life and all that. So this means a lot. Uh, it's been uh, really cool because I'm excited for all these these goals and plans that you have. I look forward to uh, continuing to follow, uh, you know, to follow your journey. Um, and I really just want to wish you and your family a uh, safe and happy, you know, holidays uh, coming up. I hope you enjoy uh, your well-deserved uh, summer holidays, you know, as an educator. Um, but thank you so much for sharing space and just sharing your wisdom and knowledge and just, uh, you know, part of your journey that is that continues. And, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see what, what comes of this book. I'm ready to put you on blast, bro. We're going to put you on blast. <laughs> but, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll give you an opportunity just to wrap us up with some final words of encouragement, and then we're good. Awesome. Love to love it. Um, yeah, I guess first and fo foremost, just like to thank you, uh, Rosa, for uh, the opportunity to come on your um, podcast. Um, I've, I've been... Um, trying to listen to some of your podcasts and, and I look forward to listening to some more of your podcasts um, as they keep coming out. Um, yeah, and I, and I wish you all the best with your um, endeavours um, in this space. So, yeah, again, thank you for the opportunity. Um, yeah, I guess for me, um, yeah, I, I've just um this whole journey of sharing my experiences and um other people's experiences is that you know you know we're whatever you're going through um you know you know people have um you know felt the same and 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 gone through similar things so wherever you are or you know, whatever you or whatever you're doing to just to keep um staying strong you know reach out to people get the the help you need if you're going through any tough times or even those that are going through good times keep reaching out and and, and celebrating those successes and and yeah um for me and my family we wish everyone a a good christmas a happy christmas and a and uh and uh hopefully a really good start to the year next year and and the rest of the year so um again uh a massive thank you um and yeah just wish you uh Rosa, all the best um over there in japan with your um teaching and 
whatever you have planned over the, the Christmas and New Year break. So thank you.